Hello, this is David Diga Hernandez, and you're watching Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. You've heard it said that God works in mysterious ways, and He certainly does. There is often a price to pay for a miracle. Moves of God can be very disruptive to our lives, but ultimately, moves of God serve His purposes. That's what I'm talking to you about on this edition of Spirit Church. But first, Stephen Moctezuma is here with me. He's going to lead you in some very anointed worship. And then we're getting right into this message. Here is Stephen Moctezuma. Oh Lord, I long to know your glory. I want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord, with your spirit once again oh lord i love to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise. Fill this temple, Lord, with your spirit once again. Oh, Lord, I long to know your glory I want to offer a sacrifice of praise fill this temple Lord with your spirit once again fill this with your spirit once again fill this temple Lord with your spirit once I want to look at a story in the book of Matthew, chapter number 8. The Bible says this in Matthew 8, beginning at verse 28. When Jesus arrived on the other side of the lake in the region of the Gadarenes, two men who were possessed by demons met him. They came out of the tombs and were so violent that no one could go through that area. They began screaming at him, Why are you interfering with us, Son of God? Have you come here to torture us before God's appointed time? There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance. So the demons begged, If you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. All right, go, Jesus commanded them. So the demons came out of the men and entered the pigs, and the whole herd plunged down the steep hillside into the lake and drowned in the water. The herdsmen fled to the nearby town, telling everyone what happened to the demon-possessed men. The entire town came out to meet Jesus, but they begged him to go away and leave them alone. Here we see Jesus delivering two demon-possessed men. Now, I believe that those men came to Jesus out of their own free will. Though they were influenced by demonic beings, they were still in control of their actions. And I believe they fought with those demonic powers as they approached the master. The men wanted to be free, but the demons wanted to stay. So they approach Jesus and Jesus exercises his mighty heavenly authority over these demonic forces. And those demonic beings beg, please let us go into those pigs. And Jesus, of course, allowed them to. 
Now, why they wanted to go into those pigs, that's a whole different lesson for a whole different time. But I want to focus on this fact here, that the townspeople who heard about this miracle were not necessarily happy with Jesus. Sure, as the gospel accounts record, these people saw the men sitting there in their right minds. They witnessed the miracle of deliverance. These men had reputations. They were demoniacs. They were strange people. They were psychotic. They would cut themselves and hang around by the tombs, and they would howl at the moon, and whenever people tried to restrain them, they would break chains of bondage, and they were able to develop a reputation as demoniacs simply because they were in bondage. Now, Jesus comes on the scene and He transforms everything. He completely liberates these men. They go instantly from being tormented to being at peace. But the people didn't really care about that. No, they were worried about the pigs. That affected their economy. That affected their businesses. This was troublesome for them. Jesus came and performed a miracle, yes, but Jesus also stirred up some trouble here. And this, of course, is what God still does today. This is the mess in the miracle. You see, all of us have this idea. Each one of us have a perspective on how we think God should move in our lives. And when we pray, we have expectations. And many of us have played out scenarios in our heads where it works out perfectly, just the way we planned, just how we wanted it to go. But that's not always the case. You see, God has His own plans. God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And God has His own will, His own purposes. And here's the truth. His will is not always going to align with your will. You see, when we think of a miracle, we think of everything becoming perfect in an instant. And that does happen. God does perform those wonderful miracles. And those are easier to see. But what, what's harder to spot, what's more difficult to see, is when God is doing something disruptive in our lives. When God moves in a disruptive way, that's when it's more difficult to see His hand moving. But He does move in disruptive ways. God will allow the things we rely on to be shaken. God will allow the economy to be shaken, the political system to be shaken, the healthcare systems to be shaken. He will allow relationships to be shaken and ministries to be shaken. Any system that we can have in place, anything upon which we can rely, God will allow to be shaken that we might experience the greater glory, that we might experience Him in His fullness. My question to you is, do you want a move of God? Do you sincerely, do you truly desire for God to move in your life, in your family, in your ministry, in your nation? If so, you'll have to accept this fact. Though it's not always the case, God does move in disruptive ways. As I said earlier, you've heard it said that God moves in mysterious ways, and this is true. But God also moves in disruptive ways. This is the mess of a miracle. I've seen families torn apart because one person wants to serve Christ in the family and the rest want nothing to do with that. This is why Jesus said, I've not come to bring peace, but a sword. He wasn't talking about violence. He was talking about division. And he wasn't talking about division for division's sake. He was talking about the fact that his ways are certain, that his identity is certain. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. And that's settled. That's settled on earth and in heaven. No one can move that. And so it is that, that, it, it is that reliability of God. It is that solid foundation of who He is that becomes a point of division. Because where one person might stand and say, I will serve the Lord and I will not be moved. Another person might look at that same situation and say, I can't agree with you on that. And so on that point, they disagree. Friends will turn on you. Family will turn on you. People will turn on you when you serve the Lord. You'll be mocked. You'll be persecuted. You'll be rejected. You'll be despised because you are a believer. Life may become complicated, but there is a mess in the miracle. So you must look for the miracle. Life will become complicated. Things will sometimes get out of hand. 
I'm not saying that God is coming to destroy your life. I'm saying He's coming sometimes to disrupt it, and there's a very big difference. You see, we may look at it as disruption because things are being moved around. Things are being shifted. Things are not the way that we planned. But here's the truth. God is setting you up that you might avoid calamity and not even know it. Moves of God will cost you something. You know, we often say, oh, we want a move of God, we want revival, we want an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our community, in our city, in our nation. Yet, when an outpouring comes, when God begins to pour out His Spirit, people can be, cannot be found. People are nowhere to be found when He begins to pour out His Spirit. I've seen this happen. People make excuses. You know, in revival times, people would be in church every single day. Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, all the way through Sunday and then to Monday again. Now, I'm not saying that's the only way that God will move, but if God so chose to move that way again, would you be in service? When revival comes, it totally disrupts our lives. When revival comes, it totally demands our attention and our time and everything we have to, go, to pour into it. When the move of the Holy Spirit comes and begins to disrupt things, will you say to God, God, go away, go to the other side, or will you be the one to say, Lord, you can do whatever you want here. You can have your way in my life, even if it means moving things around. You can have my life, even if it means disrupting my plans. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. Jesus in the garden, just before he was crucified, was wrestling in prayer. He talks to his father and he says, God, if it's possible... If it's possible, if there's any other way to do this, please let this cup pass from me. He was talking about his crucifixion. He was talking about his suffering. He said, let that pass from me, please. But then he said, nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. When these men got delivered, I'm sure they were ecstatic about their miracle. But not everyone was. You see, sometimes when God gives you a miracle, that miracle becomes disruptive because it stirs up jealousy around you. People start to look at what God is doing in your life and it creates resentment in their hearts. They begin to become envious of what God is doing in you. They, they begin to despise the favor on your life. This happens. People persecute. People become jealous. But it's not just with people that there is disruption. Sometimes God may relocate you to somewhere you never planned on being. Maybe God might challenge you to do something that's outside of what people call your comfort zone. Maybe you're called to preach, but you don't want to open your mouth. Maybe you're called to sing, but you're afraid of how people might judge your voice. Maybe you're called to start a ministry, but you're afraid of being mocked. Whatever God is calling you to do, Whatever He has placed upon your part, on your heart, know that God will bring it about, but it may be disruptive to where you are right now. When the winds of the Holy Spirit begin to blow, they often move things around in ways we didn't want them to go. God is looking for that one. God is looking for that believer who would say, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Come and move in my life, even if it means disrupting everything I've planned. Even if it means turning every intention of mine, every forecast of mine around. There is a mess in a miracle. Not always. But often enough, perhaps what God is doing now in your life, though you feel everything around you shaking, perhaps what God is doing in your life right now is the greatest thing He's ever done. Perhaps the way you're being positioned right now is that you're being positioned for the greatest thing that you've ever known. How do you know that God isn't positioning you? How do you know that God isn't setting you up? How do you know that God isn't preparing your mind, your heart, your life for what He's about to do? I truly believe this, that if we pass the test in this hour, if we will pass the test in this season, 
we will not find just the mess in the miracle, but we will find the miracle in this mess. God is in it. God is doing something. Let he who has eyes to see, see. Let he who has ears to hear, hear. God is doing something. Whether you see it or not, whether you feel it or not, whether it looks like everything is being set back. Often, what looks like in the natural as a setback is actually a promotion. I think about Joseph, who was in the house of Potiphar. He was second in command. And going from that high place, he was promoted all the way down into the prison. In the natural, it may look like a demotion. In the natural, it may look like a setback. But what God is doing, you won't understand until it's done. Have faith, believe. There's a miracle in this mess. I want to pray with you now. I want to ask that the Lord would begin to give you eyes to see. That you might look for His hand even in the midst of the chaos. Father, in the name of your Son, Jesus. I come before you now, Lord, and I ask that you open our eyes to see, Lord, even though there's a mess around us, that we might see the miracles that abound. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for answering our prayers and shaking everything around us. We honor you, Lord, and we pray, help us to see Jesus in all that we see. In the precious name of our Lord, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say amen. Well, that is it for the lesson. I want to welcome now the new members of Spirit Church. There you are up on the screen. We love you. We are praying for you. I always say that because I always mean it. If you like information on how you can join the Spirit family, this is our online church. You should join it. It's absolutely free. Then go to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch right now. Every single Sunday, depending on your time zone, every single Sunday, I'll send you a brand new teaching, just like the one you just heard. We'll send you a worship cover from Mr. Stephen Moctezuma. And then, of course, you can reply to that email for prayer support from our ministry staff. Join the almost 12,000 members from all around the world. Join the Spirit family where we gather in spirit. Look, guys, there are people who meet in locations all over the world. That's the Spirit Church. People meet in houses, in cafes, they meet in workplaces, they meet in schools, they meet in dorms. They play these videos in their homes, in these places that I'm describing, and they have church there, and that's the spirit family. I encourage you, start a spirit church group. Start showing these videos in your house, in your dorm, wherever you are in your work, it doesn't matter. Show these videos, and let's start to spread this around. Let's build God's church. Let's build the Holy Spirit's church and just go and do this. Start hosting these meetings. I challenge you to do that. Maybe some of you, you've been challenged to do that already. And we're going to begin doing these more and more. And we actually have some things coming your way where we're going to roll this out nationally and internationally. Uh, it's very simple. All you have to do is show the video and we'll keep sending you the content. It's already set up. It's already ready to go. Just start doing it now. Well, again... You can join the Spirit family by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash spiritchurch. Now I want to read your comments, and these comments come from last week's teaching, Divine Provision, the Truth About Prosperity. In that lesson, I addressed in a biblically balanced way the subject of prosperity and finances. A lot of people have abused that topic. A lot of people have gone to extremes to try to extract money out of God's people, but You'll be happy with the way I covered it. It was done in a very balanced and biblical way. So go and take a look at that, and it will encourage you to believe for God's provision during difficult times, that is, financially difficult times. While you're at it, if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to also subscribe to our channel. And while you're subscribing, go ahead and click that notification bell so that you don't miss any of our content. Subscribe to youtube.com slash encounter TV today. If you're watching anywhere else, be sure to follow us on all our social media, Instagram, Facebook, wherever. Follow us so that this content can continue to come your way. Now, here are the comments from last week's teaching. If you'd like me to read potentially your comments next week, go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section right now. Shane Roach writes, thank you, Brother David. Simple, clear, and biblically accurate. Jesus Moment writes, you've explained it perfectly. I haven't heard anyone preach it this clear before. I'm thankful that I can work from home in this season. I still need to trust Jesus with my finances because I don't know how long I'll have this job. 
I've learned these past few years that Jesus always provides. He is that good. Lynette Erasmus writes, I loved that worship song, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. It was beautiful. Thank you for this message. There are so many preachers with different teachings, which makes this topic confusing. Thank you for this sermon. You've answered my prayers. Well, thank you, Lynette. I appreciate that you've chosen to watch our content. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. And finally, Gina Green writes, Beautiful teaching as always. We give as an act of worship and love to God because we are already blessed. This is what my church teaches. I'm glad to be a partner with you guys. Keep it up. Well, thank you, Gina, for being our partner. It's because of partners like Gina and our partners who are watching this right now that we're able to continue to offer this content for free and do all of our events for free. So maybe you've been blessed by this ministry. Here's where it's time to step it up. As I mentioned in last week's teaching, I don't believe that some curse is going to come on you if you don't give to the ministry. Look, God's going to provide for you either way. And here's the biblical definition of prosperity. When God meets your needs and gives you enough left over to be a blessing to others. That is the biblical definition of financial prosperity. Anything else, you're getting it now into the extremes. But I wanted to say that to you so that you understand that as you give to this ministry, you're not giving out of obligation. You're not giving because you're pressured. You're not giving because you're trying to avoid some curse. You're giving because you love the Lord and you want to see the gospel go further. It's just that simple. As you know, we don't charge for any of our content. We give hundreds of videos away. We have an app. We have a website. We have events that we do all around the world. All of this costs money, especially when we try to get it to reach as many people as possible. And we're literally reaching millions of people with this content. I mean, literally reaching millions of people with this content. That's incredible. And it's because of your generous support. So maybe you've been praying about this for a while. Maybe you've been wondering, should I partner? Should I not? Now is the time to do it. Look, I know that when this video airs, I'm airing it in a time where many people are challenged financially. But let me tell you this. The storm is going to pass. The Lord sits on the throne. There's nothing to worry about. He's going to provide for you. Look, whether you give to this ministry or not, He's going to provide for you. But that's why you give, because you have the confidence knowing that He's taking care of it. Look, we're asking that many of you sign up to become $30 a month supporters today. If you do that, that would help our ministry on a monthly basis to continue to spread this content around. Think about what you pay for. You pay for Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, Disney Plus, you name it. There's all these different streaming services, gym memberships, and so forth. There's so much we spend money on that we don't actually need. So if you're in a bind and you're saying, well, I can't really support right now, my challenge to you is cut one of those things and instead send it to the gospel. Let this be your streaming service. The best thing about supporting this ministry is that when you support the ministry, not only do you get the content, but you're helping to sponsor the content to go to parts of the world where people couldn't otherwise afford to pay for it. The Bible says, freely you receive, so freely give. That's our ministry strategy for supporting all of this. Two words, trust God. So help us today. Make that decision right now. Sign up to become a partner or give a one-time gift into this ministry. We've had people give 100, we've had people give 500, we've had people give 1,000, we've had people give 100,000 to the ministry. It doesn't matter where your giving falls, just give out of your heart. Give cheerfully, give to the ministry knowing that the gospel is gonna go forward and that we're gonna invest every dollar wisely and use it efficiently to spread the gospel. Or become a monthly supporter today. Let this be a partnership between you and I. So I'm asking you to do that right now. Don't consider the times. Don't consider what's going on. Just consider the Word of God and do as the Holy Spirit leads you to do today. I know you're hearing His voice and I know you'll obey His voice and I thank you for that. And I just want to say this quick word to all of our partners who currently support on a monthly basis. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm overwhelmed by our partners who are sticking with us because they love the gospel, because they love Jesus, because they love this ministry, and because they love souls. Thank you for our partners who are sticking with us during this season. You are incredible, and it's because of you that we're not surviving. We are thriving. This ministry is still going and growing, and that's because of the favor of God, and the favor of God is on you too. So give today. Go to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate right now. Sign up to become a partner or give a one-time gift. I know the Lord will bless you for it. Thank you for stepping out in faith and obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit. Well, that is it for this edition of Spirit Church here on the Encounter TV Network. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. 
Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.